Hi everybody, happy Friday. We hope you've all had a good week. The sun's not shining as much as what it was last week. I hope it's still good. My name is Robin and this is Sean. And every Friday we teach you different first aid skills at 11 o'clock. And today we are going to be covering anaphylaxis, how to use an EpiPen. And if we've got time, we're gonna go over fainting as well today. So while we get into it, we love to see who's watching, where you're from and how old you are. We had a quiet week last week, so we're hoping that we'll have a little bit more chat this week. Well, we're up to 11 already, so that's better than last week. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna start off with anaphylaxis. So what is anaphylaxis? Well, at the very beginning, um, children might have lots of different allergies and intolerances. So if you have an allergy or an intolerance, your body doesn't like a trigger. So maybe your eyes might swell up or maybe you have itchy skin and your body doesn't like something. But when we're talking about anaphylaxis, this is a severe allergic reaction, which could be life threatening. So this is really severe and there's a few different signs and symptoms that can help pinpoint if it's anaphylaxis rather than an allergy. So what can happen is their face can start to swell up so they can have puffy eyes which can start to close over. Their tongue can start to swell up which means they could be struggling to breathe. Hives might start to break out. So the hives and the blotchy skin tends to happen on the hands the stomach and then spread up into the face as well. They might start vomiting, they might have diarrhea. Um, anything else, Sean? Pins and needles in the tongue, the yeah. swelling of the tongue, tightness in the chest, difficulty breathing, so that might be wheezing. Um, and I think you covered the rest of them, but we've got a few people saying hi. So Ross from Kilmarnock, Libby and Fraser, good morning. Kyle and Cameron, uh, Caitlin and Dundee, not my sister, another Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin from Dundee. Good morning, morning. from Silas and Ruri are back. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you're feeling us. better. Um, so one in 20 people will suffer from some form of allergy. And we're not saying that one in 20 people have anaphylaxis, which is the, the high end of the scale and then the lower end. We're saying one in 20 people suffer from somewhere in that middle ground. So I bet we're, um, there'll be people tuning in who do have allergies or intolerances. So you can also tell us what they might Isla, be. Chloe, yes. Yeah, so send them in, Chloe, Isla, Ross, Libby. If you've got any allergies or intolerances, pop them on the, on the screen there and let us know what they are. So we've got some really common triggers. Uh, I've put together a little um, plate of stuff here. So some common triggers might be eggs. Morning Gemma. It might also be medication. So in particular, moxicillin and penicillin, but it can be any medication. Then we're looking at fish. We didn't have any shellfish in the house, but that's the main one, but it can be again, any form of fish. Shellfish would be like your prawn or your shrimp, or if you're really posh, oysters, if you're eating oysters during lockdown. Then a really common one that we all tend to know about is nuts, in particular peanuts, but it can be any nuts at all. Then we have dairy, so your, um, your cheese, your milk. And the last common one is wheat. So that's coming from, tends to be from your bread. Um, it can also be insect things as well, but anyone can be allergic to absolutely anything. So the ones that we've just shown you are some of the most common triggers, but we have heard about people who are allergic to not just stuff that they eat, but it can be particles in the air. Or we did hear about a lady who was anaphylactic to the heat. So she was never allowed to leave her house because if it went up or down one degree, she would go into full anaphylactic shock. So she had a dog that was trained that would alert her if the temperature dropped or went up. And that dog saved her life, I think it was about six times the other year, wasn't it? Something yeah, seven mad. times in one year. So it's crazy. So it just goes to show that the triggers are completely broad. It's not always just your nuts, eggs, wheat, dairy. It can be absolutely anything at all. Kiwis, strawberries, they're on the rise. Um, so Silas doesn't have any allergies, really. We're not sure exactly what it is yet. 
Um, if you could let us know your age as well, Silas and Rory, what you might want to do is do some allergy testing, depending on what age you are. Um, but you might be doing this already, but send us your age and let us know. We might be able to give you a little hint or tip as to doing your allergy testing. So we've talked about what anaphylaxis is. So it's a severe allergic reaction, which is life threatening. And we talked about the signs and symptoms, but there's two main things that we're really worried about when it comes to anaphylaxis that could be life threatening. So one of these things that happen is when the tongue and the throat start to close up, this means that there's a tightening, which means the air can't get into the airway, which means that that person can no longer breathe. So that's one of the things that's life threatening. And the second thing that's life threatening is that their blood pressure can completely plummet. So if their blood pressure drops, that means that blood can't pump around their body, which is also life threatening. So they're the two main things that we're worried about when it comes to anaphylaxis. Yeah, so a little bit scary there. Um, your airway will close over, making it feel really tight and restricted, difficult to get that air in. And then you're not gonna feel this one so much, but your blood pressure dropping and difficulty moving that oxygen around the body. So I've seen this happen before. I was at a beer festival in Melbourne. We did have somebody from Melbourne, so it was at Oktoberfest. And my friend was drunk and he grabbed chicken satay off my plate, took a big bite, and within seconds, instantly, he knew he was suffering from an anaphylactic attack. That's the advantage of getting anaphylaxis a second time. It's, doesn't, it's not much of an advantage because it's not nice to put your body through that, but you'll know within seconds, the pins and needles in the tongue, the swelling in the throat, the difficulty breathing, instantly he knew, I'm suffering from an anaphylactic shock, straight to the first aid tent and he was treated. But we'll show you what the treatment is in a little bit. And right enough, some people have it so severe that say it's nuts, for example, it doesn't need to be that they've ate the nuts. It can be that there's just nuts in the area. So maybe it's in the classroom, for example, the particles in the air can be enough to trigger the anaphylactic shock. They don't necessarily need to be eating it. So you have to be really careful. If any of your friends have anaphylaxis and you know what their triggers are, please make sure that you keep those triggers away from those people. So we've talked about the signs and symptoms and what it is now. Just, just to talk about what a few people have said there. So with the ages coming in, six, seven, eight, we've got a few triggers, the cold weather, dogs. Um, so these are quite common triggers, the, the fur of cats and dogs. So these are allergies, not anaphylaxis. Allergies, yeah. Um, you might go out of allergies. So as you get a little bit older, coming to the age that you are at the moment, just maybe a year or two older than you are, you might start to go out of these allergies. Um, but there are things that you can also take to help with the changes in the seasons and with those allergies. So speak to your doctor or your chemist and they can prescribe you something. And the other one we had was eggs. At the age of, was it 25? 25 it came on. So these allergies can lie dormant in your system. It might not be the first time you're exposed to eggs. So I'm guessing it was Abby um, rather than your child. <laughs> Unless you've got an old child who's 25. I am guessing it was Abby who was exposed to the eggs. And you may have ate them before. You may have ate them your whole life. You may have had them 10, 20, 30, 40 times. And then that 41st time when you eat those eggs, it reacts in your body, flares up. And this is when you find out you have anaphylaxis. So as we say, it may, may be dormant in your system. It's not hereditary. So if you have anaphylaxis as a parent, it doesn't mean that your child's gonna have anaphylaxis or vice versa. Your child might pick something up and you don't have anaphylaxis. So just to make you aware of that, that it's not hereditary and it can flare up. We also heard of a 54 year old man. He worked on a construction site and he went, put on his work boots. There was a bee in his boots. It stung his foot and he found out he was anaphylactic at 54 years of age. So it didn't necessarily lie dormant in his system. He'd just never been exposed to that trigger before. So it's very important that we know the treatment because it can happen to anyone at any age, at any stage in their life. So we're gonna talk about the treatment. If someone has anaphylaxis and it's not the first time, they will be given an auto-injector pen which is a shot 
of adrenaline. So your body naturally makes this hormone anyway, but this is a shot that's gonna help them. So the most common one is an EpiPen. So we're gonna show you how to use one of these today. So this is what the EpiPen looks like here. It is blue on one side and orange on the opposite side. So we're gonna show you how to use this one, but there are other ones. We do have a real life auto injector pen here. We wouldn't and recommend using this one. <laughs> we're not gonna use this one today, but this one is completely white, but it works just the same. So the one we are gonna use is an EpiPen. Now, ideally, you really want the person who has anaphylaxis to administer their own EpiPen themselves, or if there is a teacher or another adult roundabout, please get them to help. But if the person can't use the EpiPen themselves and there's no one else around, we need you to come in and do some first aid. So the very first thing you want to do with someone who is going into anaphylactic shock is to get them to lie down fast because if they're standing up, it's very likely that they're gonna pass out quickly and anaphylaxis does tend to come on pretty quick so you do need to act fast. You don't want them to fall over and bump their head as well and then you'll have to deal with that too. Also, if they are lying down and they're still, they're not moving, the anaphylaxis doesn't spread around their body quite as fast. So you want to keep them as still as possible. If they're moving, the toxin does spread a little bit faster. So that's another reason why it's good to get them down on the floor as quickly as possible and as still as possible. So we've got a few more allergies coming in. Silas and Rudy, have you ever had to administer an EpiPen to your dad? Have you ever seen your dad have an allergic reaction? Ailey in Edinburgh, good morning. Do you have any allergies? Anybody in your family have any allergies? And final, Carol, 42, severe dust allergy. How do you deal with that? Do you have to stay away? Do you have to clean the house? Continuously, let us know how you flare up and what happens. Back to Robin with her <laughs> EpiPen treatment. So we are going to use this EpiPen. Now the best place to administer an EpiPen on someone is their outer thigh. So this soft, fleshy part here. Now technically you could put it anywhere on anyone's body, but this is the nicest, fleshiest part for them. And it's in the middle of their body so it can spread around a little bit easier. So once you've got your casualty lying down, we're going to use this, you're going to be my casualty. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah that, that should be fine. We now need to take off this blue lid. Now this blue lid is stopping this EpiPen from accidentally going off. If anyone's carrying it around in their pocket or in their bag, it's going to stop it from accidentally going off. So we need to take this blue safety cap off. Now, when we take this blue safety cap off, it's really important that we wrap our hands around the EpiPen like this. So we asked you last week if you could just have a normal pen handy. So if you just want to grab a normal pen right now and grasp it so your fingers and thumbs aren't near either end of it at all. And the reason for that is if you hold the EpiPen the wrong way, so the needle, which has the medication is going to come out this orange side here. If you hold it the wrong way and you've got your thumb on it and you go to put it into your casualty, there's a slight chance that you could pop this EpiPen with adrenaline into your own body. Now, if that was to happen, don't panic. It's not life-threatening for you. If someone has uh, gets um, an EpiPen who doesn't need it, they're just going to have lots of energy and then they're gonna feel really sick, but it's not gonna do anything too harmful. But the most important thing is anaphylaxis is worrying and it does come on fast. And if you accidentally put it into yourself, it means the casualty who really needs it isn't gonna get that medication. So it's really important that our fingers and thumbs are near either end of it. So we can't make any mistakes. We have to get this right first time. Now I said it goes into the outer thigh, it does go through clothing, so it goes through jeans and seams. If they have any wallets or phones in their pocket, you will need to move that out the way first of all to make sure that you've got a clear path to this outer thigh. There's one piece of clothing that this needle won't go through, and that is leather. So if they are wearing bike leathers, you're gonna to have to move that out the way first of all before you pop this needle into them. Now this needle might be a little bit ouchy, but 
don't worry, we're not going to hurt them and this is going to save their life. So we're wrapping our hand around it. The blue safety cap has come off. Now this orange part is going to go into the thigh. Now, I'm going to let you in for a secret. Sean doesn't like needles. So if I go to put this needle into his thigh right now here, there's a chance that he's going to try and jump and move away from me and I'm not going to get this whole EpiPen into his body so not all the um, adrenaline is going to go into him and that's a worry. So if I was to do it here, he might flinch and move away. <laughs> I think he's sleeping and I might miss him. So we're going to go for the opposite thigh. Now the good thing about that is if I go for this opposite thigh here, I'm going to create a barrier so if Sean tries to move away from me, it doesn't matter, that needle is still going to go into him or if he moves towards me, again that needle is still going to go into him. So I'm just going to hop round to the other side so you can get a clear look at what I'm doing. So we're going to go for the opposite thigh, blue safety cap comes off, we're going to go in here. Now you have to do this forceful until you hear a click noise. Then once it clicks, we're going to hold it for 5 seconds. And that's just to make sure that all the drugs definitely gone into the system and then we're going to release. I want to show you that EpiPen now has this safety precaution here which is going to help stop you from touching the needle because there is a big needle in here. Now even though there is a needle and we do have this safety precaution on, just pop the EpiPen to the side and then it's really important for anaphylaxis that you call an ambulance. So you need to call 999 or if you tuned in before we talked about 112, you have to call an ambulance every single time. Even if Sean looks like he's getting better, there's a chance that the EpiPen could wear off and he will definitely need to be taken up to the hospital and he'll get monitored for normally about 24 hours to make sure that he doesn't relapse. So even if your casualty seems okay, it doesn't matter, you must call for an ambulance. So if you're by yourself and there's no one else around, do the EpiPen first and then call for an ambulance. But if there's a few people that are in the classroom or who are in your house, one person will do the EpiPen while the other person calls for an ambulance. But it's really, really important that we get an ambulance every single time for anaphylaxis. And what you might find is that response time from the ambulance, so we talked about that in, in week one, and with the CPR, the average ambulance response time is 20 minutes. You'll probably find that that's reduced significantly during anaphylaxis. For the reason, it's not an ambulance that's coming, it's a first responder. They're on a scooter, they're weaving in and out of the traffic, straight up to the lights. The back of their scooter is filled with EpiPens and they come and inject. They buy you time until the ambulance arrives. So you're still going to need that ambulance, but the first responder is going to get there hopefully a bit quicker. He's going to help you to feel better until the ambulance does come. So after I've given Sean the first EpiPen, I'm now going to monitor him the whole time until the paramedics come. If he seems okay, I'm just going to leave him lying on the floor and I am going to watch over him. However, if he starts to not feel good again, we're hoping that he has two EpiPens with him. Now, most people who do have anaphylaxis do carry two or more EpiPens, but not always. But if there is a second EpiPen, we're going to use that one. Now, the important thing is we do need to wait a little bit of time before we pop it in. So ideally we want to be waiting five minutes. So after you give the first EpiPen, please look at your phone or a clock or your watch and time five minutes. Now after an EpiPen has been used, that's it. You pop it to the side and when the paramedics come, they will get rid of it for you because they haven't, there's a needle here. So in the ambulance, they have a sharps container and they will take it and dispose of it safely for you. So you don't need to be dealing with any needles. So after the first one's used, you can't use it again, but if they have a different one, a second one, then you are going to use that one as well. So we're waiting five minutes, and then we're going to do the second one. Do you want, to do, it? Do you want to do it? No, I'm in position. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So after five minutes, we are taking the blue safety cap off. We're wrapping our hands around it, so our thumb and finger isn't near either side of it. We're going to reach across to the thigh, and then we're going to pop it in. 
till it clicks. One, two, three, four, five, to make sure all the drugs definitely got into his body and then we release and pop the EpiPen to the side and then we're gonna monitor and try and look, whoa, he's better. Resurrected. <laughs> so we did say uh, Daddy is in pain from Chloe. Robin said to hit them with the pen really hard, but if you don't have an EpiPen and you've got a ballpoint pen, hitting somebody really hard in the leg. Sorry, uh, Dad. <laughs> Chloe, I'm not surprised that your dad's in a lot of pain. Um, so maybe go gentle when you're practicing that one. Now, it is really important to learn how to use one of these because even if you don't have an allergy yourself, what if you go to a sleepover at a friend's house and they have an allergy? What if you go camping, maybe it's scouts, guides, whatever kind of camping it is and one of your friends has a reaction, again, you need to use the pen. So it is important that everybody knows how to use it. We hope that you don't have to use it, but it's a skill that's worthwhile learning. Yep, and definitely remember that if they can do the EpiPen themselves, please let them do that or get an adult. But if there's no one else to help and the person who has anaphylaxis is at the point where they can't do it themselves, then please, you can go in and help them. And remember that if you're not 100% sure just go ahead and use it anyway because you can't hurt someone by giving them a little bit of adrenaline. So if you accidentally do give it to someone who didn't need it, don't worry. They're just going to feel a little bit sick and then they're going to get better. So if you're ever unsure, just go for it because anaphylaxis is so fear, severe and it's life threatening. It's always better to be on the cautious side and go ahead and use it. Okay, so there's, there's a lot a lot of information we've just given you. So I'm going to do a quick recap before we ask you some questions because we have covered so much. So anaphylaxis, try and remember this stuff, is a severe allergic reaction. So we have intolerance, we have allergies, and then we have anaphylaxis at the top of the scale. So this one is code red, needs an ambulance, very serious, a severe allergic reaction. The next thing that we have are signs and symptoms. So we'll start in the head, we'll work our way down. Uh, there might be puffiness in the cheeks, so facial swelling. A rash might break out in the face. There might be swelling in the tongue, pins and needles in the mouth, swelling in the throat, difficulty breathing. Might have some wheezing or coughing coming from the chest. Moving down into the tummy, might feel a little bit sick, so vomiting, might have diarrhea, and we might just not feel right. We might say, Robin, I just, I feel terrible, I don't feel myself, something's not right. And that, that's another quite common sign or symptom. You can't put your finger on it, but you know something's wrong. We're looking for two of these signs or symptoms. Two or more, potential anaphylaxis, suspected anaphylaxis. The triggers, we had fish, wheat, Dairy. Are you looking at my plate? <laughs> I medication. have now eggs, medication, kiwis, strawberries, bee stings. So we had lots of different triggers. With the EpiPen, we had wrapper fist around. The blue cap comes off. If the blue cap doesn't come off, it won't work. The blue cap is a safety feature. So blue cap off, injecting into the upper outer quadrant of the thigh. This is a big fleshy area, distributes the drug evenly, and also the needle is going to be less painful in a big fleshy area. So when we teach the children, they always like to go, stab them, stab them. I think that's what Chloe did to her dad. But the second time she's gentle. <laughs> so we stab them, it clicks, five, four, three, two, one, hold for five, and then we dispose of the pen. After five minutes, if the symptoms haven't improved, or if they have worsened, we get a second pen, brand new one, and we use it again. It's completely safe to use every five minutes if you have more than one. But it is a one-shot wonder. So make sure that that's going into the casualty and not into yourself by having your thumb in the wrong position and injecting yourself. What do you reckon? Is that enough information? I and think then that is. Run through the questions. A few questions for you. We wrote them down this week. You go for it. All right, question one. What is anaphylaxis? So write down your answer, let's hear you. We've got five questions for you. 
Number two is name some of the signs and symptoms. So how do you know someone's maybe going into anaphylactic shock is what we call it. So name how you think you would recognise these things. Number three is list some of the common triggers. So we've got all different triggers. There can be absolutely anything, but we've got some main ones there. So if you want to run through some of the common ones. Question four is how long do you have to wait until you give your second EpiPen? And number five is what is in this EpiPen? Can anyone remember what I said the medication was? And just to speak to Ellie, are you asthmatic? Does the pollen affect you in that way? Are you asthmatic as well or is it an allergy and you just use your antihistamines? Okay, so we have got number one is what is anaphylaxis and we have got it is a severe what? allergic reaction. Good, we're getting well all the done. answers yeah, coming in. Yeah, we've got okay. everyone back on top form. So we've got the, the team from Melbourne, they knew the answer. Silas and Ruri, they knew the answer. Yep, worst allergic reaction. Perfect. The worst allergic. I like the yeah. word of that one. <laughs> number two is list some of the signs and symptoms. So we have got swelling in tongue, rash, perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, we popped up the next question. Yep, so Sean's gone over them already. So swelling, hives, rash, struggling to breathe, dizzy, sick, there's some of them. Number three is some of the common triggers. So I've seen some here, seafood, shellfish, dairy, wheat, perfect. These are fab answers, guys. Well done, everyone. Bee stings, pollen, good. Number four was how long until we administer the second EpiPen? So we've got five minutes, perfect, five minutes. Team Melbourne got that one as well. Number five is what was in this EpiPen. So a, a needle, yeah, that's right, there's, is, a, there's a needle in there. It is a big needle in there, but the medication, what was it? It's so below. we've got it, yeah, it is a shot of adrenaline. So that is everything covered for today. We haven't had time. How long do you wait for your second EpiPen? Did you do that one? Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> So we haven't had time to go over fainting today, so we'll try and tie that one over till next week. Thank you to everyone who watched along today. We would love to, again, see photographs of everyone participating and taking part, getting stabbed with pens. The with bruise them. from your dad. <laughs> we, want, we want to see it all, so send them in, because that does make our day. Next week, we are going to be covering another really important um, topic. We are going to cover choking how to prevent it and then what action to take if someone around you is choking and if we have time we will cover fainting as well. Anything else for today? No, that's all. If so. anyone wants to re-watch this, we will be popping it up on our Facebook and we've also got a YouTube channel. So again, Joe Wex, we're coming for you. All these people watching in. That is us for today. If anyone has any questions, shoot them over and if you have a little minute, please share this video on your Facebook so we can reach as many people and teach as many people about anaphylaxis as possible. Thanks. So thank you, Caitlin, Ailey, Ross, Silas, Rudy, Chloe, who else? Isla. Um, all right, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.